as you know by now, there are multiple types of like intelligent, hyper intelligent, bing boom bam species people on this planet. And while I plan for there to be around six, I guess, uh, I'd say only three so far are well developed. Humans, Yotai, on the topic of today's video, fishies! I don't really need to explain humans, I mean, are this humans? So like, C tier at best? And I've already explained the Yotai, so now I just gotta explain these I love hitting- I'm sorry, I love hitting you. I love hitting you all silly guys! And now I have to logically explain why the main character is a shark with legs. <laughs> this is probably gonna be the shortest segment in the video, because there's just not much to talk about with this one, with <laughs> this part. Fishies are like the most recent species to evolve on Earth, and as such, they never had much adversity when they tried to like integrate into society. This is mostly because of the Yotai, and like others that came before the Yotai who already had that whole like, fight for your rights kind of thing, you know? It was relatively easy and painless for the fishies to integrate into the world. And you may be asking me, what does that have to do with their evolution then? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that wasn't the intro, that was the explanation. <laughs> Long ago, some ancient fish looked at the land and they were like, Ooh, wait, I wanna go there! And to do this, they have, they simultaneously evolved, like, heightened intelligence, and... A way to go on the land! <laughs> I will explain the legs further in the physiology section. But the thing is, like, they, they reached a human level of intelligence at the point where they were basically still just normal fish. But, like, with legs, though. Meaning they weren't done evolving! By the time they were accepted into society. So the <laughs> it's so it's so dumb, it's so dumb, it's so dumb. <laughs> so they kinda just left it at that. And again, I I'm gonna explain and elaborate on that part more during like the, the culture section. So basically, they just evolved legs. And since they were already accepted, that's kinda all they needed. <laughs> so they just stayed that way. <laughs> Yup, that's the history! <laughs> now I know the question. I'm not dumb. I know what you're gonna say. Oh, what do their feet look like? Are they just like, fish fins? Or are they like, human feet? And I know the answer! I do! I know the exact answer to that question. I just think it's funnier not to tell you. <laughs> a fishy can be based on any cartilaginous fish, which to simplify it is just like sharks and rays. Feel your ear, that thing, that's cartilage. The tip of your nose too, feel that, that's also cartilage. And you notice it's like really kind of like bendy and squishy, but also kind of hard a little bit. That's what these guys, I didn't hit it. That's what these guys' entire skeletons are made out of. Ribs. Bones. These are bones, okay? These are bones. These are bones. This diagram might be a little hard to understand, so sorry about that, but this is how the legs would attach to the body. You might notice the legs are just kind of, like, there. They're not attached to anything. It's pretty much, like, exclusively attached with nothing but muscle. And this allows for an insane amount of flexibility and a surprising amount of durability, too. And it's not just their legs, like, they're, again, their entire skeleton is made of cartilage, like, the, the bendy, squishy stuff. So these guys can like wiggle and squish and like do all kinds of things like no one else can do. This comparison is kind of funny, but like... So both these legs are facing this way. You can see here, there's like other bones down here attaching the two like main leg bones together. But for fishies, in the same way that like the base is attached, it's like exclusively with just a muscle. So they can like bend a lot further like back and forward than like other legs can. They can bend their legs in a way that makes it look like they're broken, but they're not. That's just how they work. Similar to that, they can like take hits that would otherwise break someone else's bones. And they can also take falls from like a lot higher distances than what anyone else can. And I, th I think you know where I'm going with this. All fishies essentially just have cartoon physics. They're like on average the most mobile kind of person on earth. They can outrun, outjump. <laughs> that was dope. Outrun, outjump pretty much every yotai and most humans. But of course all that land stuff, shut up. That's only half the story. They are fish. They can swim. They swim like this underwater. They just like fold up their legs and they just act like normal fish basically. Maybe they like, you know, have a little kick boost. They got like a little speed boost in the water or something. I don't know. Compared to like normal fish, you know, <laughs> without legs, um, they're not the best swimmers. You know, this isn't, this isn't like as aerodynamic as a normal fish, obviously, but they're good enough to the point where they have 
in absolute just objective dominion over the ocean, which I'll elaborate more on later. And what I said earlier that like they can technically take hits and falls that would like break bones or like maybe even kill someone else. Like, yeah, that's technically true, but that's because they have bendy, squishy bones. And the point of bones is to protect like organs and stuff. So even if you can bend your squishy bones a little bit, that's kind of cool. You still have squishy bones. Essentially, their bones aren't good at being bones, but they're really good at letting them be silly, and that's important. Another weakness they have is the way they breathe. All fish breathe oxygen, just like we do, so you might wonder why they can't breathe on land. This is because, to simplify it again, the gills essentially close when they go on land due to heightened gravity, and no oxygen can reach the inside of their body anymore, so they choke. Fishy gills are like a little stronger than that, you know, they can like stay open on land actually, but they're still more efficient at breathing underwater. So if you're like stuck in an area without water, it can be hard for them to breathe after a while. And getting hit in the gills for a fishy is like the same thing as getting hit in the gut for us. Well, it hurts more for fishies, and it can genuinely lead to them choking. So... If a fishy comes to like rob you or something, just give him a <laughs> give him a mean one in the center. And another downside is the obvious fact that these dorks don't have hands. Like their fins are a little strong, so they can like wrap around something to grab it for like a few seconds, and they can like go bird with it and just like carry things with their mouths. And they can just like ah, good. But yeah, they just don't have hands. Like straight up. It sucks. There's no like, <laughs> there's no like work around to that one. There's no like, oh, look at this cool adaptation. No, they just don't have hands. <laughs> but again, they evolved in a world where they don't really need them. Speaking of which, let's talk about how they actually fit into this world and society. I did the same disclaimer last time, but I'm obviously gonna make it again. Fishies are in no way meant to be like an allegory or a stand-in for any other real-world culture or ethnicity. They live all around the world and they work the same way humans do. A fishy can be Latino, Polynesian, Japanese, <laughs> African, <laughs> Australian, American, anything, etc. All options are possible. If humans are capitalism and yokai is combat, then fishies, watch this transition, I didn't play out, Woo! Whoop! Our pleasure. What did he say? Yes, in that way, but like mainly in terms of just having fun. The way they came into the world with like absolutely no conflict, well, basically no conflict, gave them like a very easygoing lifestyle. They love to make music and they love to paint and to dance and to cook and to sculpt and to write and they're a bunch of little artists. I think it's cute. What the goblin shark tails look like? Ew, what the hell? Fishy music is mainly played electronically with these boards that have like customizable buttons. Essentially, it's just a dance pad and you just like use your feet to make a song. So it's like, yo, give me a beat, I got you. Put up, put up, put up. <laughs> Music is very improvisational and very rhythm based. They don't really follow proper music theory. It's like half the fun for them is like literally creating the song itself. Like dancing to create. <laughs> that looks like sushi. Ooh, that's a... <laughs> It's a dark comparison there. When it comes to painting, they have these little like attachments that go on their shoes and their tails. And so they just have paintbrushes attached to their feet and their tails. And so they just go up to a painting and just like start doing flips and stuff. And they go like, bam, blah, blah, blah. And they just like, just go crazy on it. They go stupid. Sometimes they just like dunk their whole body in paint. And then just boom. While this sounds completely chaotic and very unintentional, and yes, half of the process is. There's a real art to it, and like the best fishy painters can make stuff that rivals the work of anyone else. Their towns and cities are constructed like video game levels. They have like platforms and like <clears throat> walls everywhere to like jump around on. There are very freaking water passengers called currents, and they're like little chunks taken out of the ground that are full of water. Usually in a U shape, but they can vary to like fun tunnels that are underground. I hope the diagram kind of makes sense. It's a little hard to draw the idea in my head. Like, like this is like the same thing just from different angles. Like here's the bridge, right? You got a bridge here, you got the bridge here, and like this is full of water. Here's the here's like the tunnel undergoing it. Tunnel. It's the same. I try to make it. If it's a little confusing, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Here, look. See, the tunnel is full of water like this. And the same thing here. Like, this is the water. So you can, like, go over the bridge whenever you want, but a fishy can just, like, jump up and just go, like, whoop! Just, like, in and out of the tunnel. Just, like, jump into it, swim, jump down, swim up, jump back out. They're kind of like those tubes that dog shows have. Uh, maybe thinking about it that way makes it a little easier to understand. <laughs> These currents have two functions. One, 
They're fun. As well as being a much needed way for fishy to just like go in, get out, get a big gulp of oxygen really quick. And by the way, of course, all currents have a filter in them so the water doesn't get dirty. But like doing this for a fishy is just taking a big like deep therapeutic breath. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a factory reset kind of. Because of this, these currents have been semi-frequently distributed across like all cities and towns across earth for, for fishies to enjoy but they're not as common as like the yotai heat booths for example last question you may have um how do they build their towns they don't have hands great question answer being they didn't <laughs> fishies have always just simply commissioned other species to do their building for them so like humans and yotais they have them build their homes and their buildings so for pretty much every job that doesn't require passion or artistry in some way <laughs> fishies pay someone else to do it and in general they don't even have like money in their society everything is free fishy restaurant owners cook and serve food just because they love doing it. Like they don't, they don't get any money from it. Artists, musicians, actors, all of the professions don't turn a dime for them. But how do they pay for the commissions then? Well, that's easy. <laughs> Manipulation. You see, fishies are the only intelligent species on earth that had access to the ocean. They entered society before humans would have invented submarines. So because no submarine or like scuba gear exist at all, they are literally the only people who can go down there and like research stuff and record footage. So back to the previous question, they don't pay them with money. They pay them with knowledge. Fishies have a pseudo job system. Think of it kind of like jury duty. Random fishies are just randomly selected sometimes to just go explore the ocean for a day. Scientists and researchers of other species like send in their requests to the fishies for things they want to know more about. So for example, let's say you as a fishy are picked one day. And so you just get like a letter saying, Hey buddy, bozo, idiot, is you're gonna go on a dive day next week. We want you to go down there and get other information or recordings of moray eels. And it's not like required to find that or else you can't leave or something. It's just like generally pointing you in the direction of what to look for. So back to our example, you as a fishy have a dive day and you don't find any moray eels. That's fine. As long as you got recordings or info on literally anything, you can just go to the surface after your dive day and give the scientists. But if you do find what they were looking for, they pay you in money, people money. So you could just like go to a human mall or something and have a fun little spending day. I don't know. It's like, there's no pressure to find the exact thing they want you to find. But if you do find it, you get to have fun doing like outsider things like human things and yotai things you have money to spend on their goods and services humans yotai and like all other species get their footage and info for like documentaries and research and fishies in turn get to have fun not having jobs <laughs> it's a win-win but of course this system only works for like dedicated fishy communities ones that are run and inhabited almost exclusively by them by the way sorry if you hear like a lot of screaming and cheering and music in the back uh, my brothers have their friends over and they're being very loud and I'm not gonna stop their fun because they are vibing. If a fishy wants to move to like a human city or something, they'd have to get a normal job. And due to the stereotypes of them being carefree and lazy, as long as the fact that they uh. don't have hands, uh, it's really hard for them to get hired usually for normal jobs. So because of that, most fishies stay within their tight-knit communities and that led to a kind of weird separation between them and all the other species of people. They don't intermingle a lot with other communities, so this has led some people to view them as kind of foreign and unfortunately lesser. These people who think that are obviously frowned upon and the fishy don't usually care, but a fishy trying to move to like even a small town or something of just humans or yotai or any other kind of people can have a very hard time fitting in and feeling accepted. But the internet of course exists. So it's not like fishies are this little like, little separated lonesome little corner of the planet. They play a massive role in society and on earth, just like all other people. Sorry, sorry, I <laughs> I was just getting ready to draw like the final little conclusion thing, little drawing, but um, that, that, the fact that I mentioned the internet, like how it exists and that's how they mainly communicate with other people, that reminded me, that because of that, fishies are on average the best gamers of all species of people. Um, that is very lore relevant. And I draw my I draw my marker. Um Are fishies silly? Yes. Do they know that? 
yes. They're not here to start wars or to change the world. They're just here to have a good time. For better or worse, they are the most culturally different and separated people on Earth. They found an entirely different way of supporting themselves in a way that allows them to have fun without the burdens of money or jobs. And whether you admire that or you scoff at it, I don't think they care either way. Oh man, that one was a lot of fun actually. <laughs> Besides the undeads, which I obviously have to cover in a Halloween video, that's just gonna be its own thing. I don't have much to say about the people of this world anymore. That's kind of it as of right now. But bro, I have an entire game in my head. You think I stopped at just the people? <laughs> we can get to the setting of the game, an overview of the plot. Without spoiling anything, of course. Game mechanics, control, music theory, and definitely videos about Tango, Addy, and Ray, the main characters. I run polls on my community tab where you can like pick which aspect of the game you want me to talk about next. So look out for those if you want me to like talk about something specific. That's all from me, so have a good day. But, but uh, I've always wanted to try this in editing and I always, I kept forgetting about it. So I guess I'm gonna do it now. Um. <clears throat>